OK, BP2. Point, oh, remember now we're coming up with, to solve this problem, a solution. Maybe you saw that, OK, but we've already talked about it. Um, but please, pause, write your own solution paragraph. So your P is still your P. Your point is still your point. Your main solution is your point. Okay, so we can still call it a PEE -E paragraph because we're still putting forward the point. The difference is now our point is what is the main solution to the problem we just talked about. Okay, so pause the video, write your answer, and then come back to look at mine. To solve this problem, communities need to offer better facilities and activities to draw the teenagers and young people out of their apartment blocks. Phrase there, draw out, means to bring something out. Um, like to bring out somebody's personality, to bring somebody out from their home, okay? So to draw them out of the apartment blocks. How can we do this? Now, I might say a gaming center. You know, if you put within that community, you build a building in the middle that has, you know, video game area for the children to come and sit and play videos together. Not on one computer by themselves, but, you know, just sit there on the sofa next to each other playing a game, talking with each other. Um, and making friends that way. Um, I say it might even mean, I'm saying we can still use the technology, even though that's why most people stay in their apartments, that can be the way to attract the kids. At least here, the young people can talk face to face with other children and build closer relationships. At least it's better than playing video games at home by themselves. Now you'll notice my sentences are a little bit shorter than I usually write. And of course, there's a very good reason for that. What is that reason? Yes, of course, because we're doing four BPs, which means we have to try to fit them in a little bit better. So now we would review that paragraph and plan our BP3, but again, I'm only gonna do that with the BP1. So let's have a look at our BP3. So now our BP3 would be our next problem. Do you remember what we talked about for the next problem, the health problems? Okay, so have a think about that and write your point, example, and explain, then come back to me. Welcome back. So my point. The other problem is, of course, the environmental problems that can cause physical and emotional health problems. Okay, so environmental things that lead to physical and emotional health. My example is that they are spending less time outdoors because of pollution and are becoming unhealthier. Again, you notice that by now I'm going into less information and less detail because, again, we're trying to fit more stuff in. Um, my explain, without such pollution, children would do a lot more exercise and have time to play with their friends. Now, I know this is true in cities in China, like Beijing, what I've lived in there. There's been times I don't want to go outside because the pollution is so bad. I want to stay inside of my nice air-conditioned apartment. And it means I do a lot less exercise in a place like Beijing than I do now in Weihai, where it has a much cleaner environment with beautiful mountains and seaside and lots of places to go hiking and walking and play sport with much cleaner air. I do a lot more exercise there because of the environment. Okay. But you'll see our paragraph is definitely getting a lot shorter. So now let's move on, review that. We're not going to do that now and start our BP4. So the solution paragraph. So what can we do to overcome the problem of pollution, keeping people inside? So write your paragraph and then come back to see mine. My point and example I've put together in one sentence. The main step in solving this is building better public transport, such as subway systems, which can decrease travel time to schools and malls. So say this is where a lot of young people spend their time. They're at school or they go out to the mall with their friends. But if you're spending an hour in public transport on the bus with all the petrol fumes and pollution in the air, standing on the bus for like an hour, you don't want to even go places. You don't want to go to a sports center. You don't want to go and do anything because you're stuck there on the bus for such a long time. So if we have a subway system, it will be faster and cleaner and make people spend more time there. So because of this, children will breathe cleaner air on the way to places and spend more time enjoying themselves. So again, very simple paragraph because of the way we've tried to put in the BP4, uh, four BPs. Okay. Now again, you might think to yourself, hmm, this is not enough detail. It might actually be better off just to have the two paragraphs 
but those two paragraphs combine and give more information and detail. Both would work well. By having four paragraphs, we have had to make them shorter and less detailed, but they're still structured very well. Okay, so read that if you want to do that, and let's finally move on to your conclusion. Well, not finally. Finally, you would edit everything, but we're not doing that today. So your conclusion again. Oh, I was meant to say, what is your main problem? What is your main solution? I hope you didn't see that. Um, so write your conclusion. Come back. Three, two, one. Look at mine. Overall, young people are depressed because they spend too much time indoors alone. So we need to reverse this trend by building better public transport and community centers. Okay, so I mentioned about the community centers playing video games and subway systems for better transport. Fairly simple conclusion there. Now again, when I look at this way of writing the essay, it has its bonuses because it means you don't have to go into as much detail and explanation. And for a lot of students, they have trouble doing that. They have trouble giving lots of detail and deep explanations and expanding on their examples. So if you're not sure, you can do it like this. You still need to cover that point, that example, that explain, but you don't need as much detail. So the last thing we're gonna look at um, that I've chosen to look at is a big thing, examples. Okay, There's lots of students have bad examples. So what we're gonna do for the last eight minutes or so of these videos, I'm gonna show you a bad example and we're gonna to try to write a better example. And I've made them pretty simple for the first one. So the tendency of human beings to copy one another is shown in the popularity of fashion clothes and consumer goods. To what extent do you agree? Okay, so it's two things. One, humans copy each other, and we see this in clothes and consumer goods. Okay. Now, I personally can't argue with that. People do copy each other all the time. Most of the time, people's cop people are copying someone. Okay, so I can't argue against that. So my, my point is, my position is, yes, I agree with this. Um, and the evidence is clear all over the world that people will copy each other by wearing the same kind of clothes. So my point is that, yes, they do wear the same clothes. There's not much more to say than that. This example, you will see people wearing the same style, color, and kinds of clothing in almost every country. Is it an example? Well, it kind of is an example. It's sort of saying something, but it's not a proper example. It's not a real specific example. And I think this is an easy one to be specific. We have countries, we have clothing there, so it wouldn't be too hard to do this. So think about that. What could you put in here for your example? Pause, write, and come back. Okay, so let's look at my example. Now again, I'm writing this because most of the students watching this video are from China. So you will see people in small villages in the west of, uh, Oops, made a mistake. That's meant to be the west of China. My mistake, sorry. Wearing trousers and shirts like people in New York or Beijing where everyone just wears trousers and shirts. You know, there's such common things to wear all over the world. But I'm going to use specific clothing and specific places. Yeah, just to make this example a little bit more explanatory. So, you know, again, the west of China like Xinjiang area, these kind of areas, if you go to Tibet, if you go to a village in India, Africa, everywhere, people wear pretty much the same clothes. We copy each other. And if we don't, we laugh at each other. <laughs> You're wearing a dress, Bob. Okay, um, let's look at the BP2 example. Same thing, a very, very general example. And I've chosen the first question because it's pretty easy to come up with better examples. Okay, so we start with the way people consume and purchase goods also represents our natural trend of conformity. Conformity, one of my favorite words. Um, don't conform without thinking. Okay, we all have the same things in our homes and shops all over the world. Oh, sorry, I need to say that properly. We all have the same things in our homes and shops all over the world sell the same items. There actually should be a comma in there um, because it's actually a pause between parts of the sentence as opposed to a list. Okay, so places that sell things which are different are both rare and often go out of business. 
Okay, so you know we've got a fairly clear point, a fairly clear explain, but we could certainly have a more detailed example. So please, at home, pause, write a better example, then come back to me in three, two, one. Okay, almost every house has computers, TVs, and a sofa, while shops sell Nike shoes and Chanel perfume in every country. So again, uh, fashion clothes and consumer goods. Actually, I wrote this with a student in my class. So thank you there, Angel, if you're watching. We wrote this one together in our class one day. Um, so, again, it's not hard to say in our homes, well, what kind of things? T TVs and computers, you know. There's lots of forms of entertainment, but everyone has a TV nowadays, you know. But not other forms of traditional entertainment, but everyone has a TV, you know. You can see Nike shoes in the strangest places. They're in almost every country you will see them. Okay, so that was a pretty easy one, I think, to come up with an example. The next one is a bit more difficult. So let's read through it quickly. Some countries encourage teenagers to have part-time jobs. That should be a part-time job. I actually cut and paste these questions. These are not mine. And see it as a good thing while others disagree. Okay, so should teenage, teenagers have a part-time job? I think so. I think it's a great thing for high school students to get some part-time work. Okay, it's common in most countries in the world outside of China. Um, the biggest advantage of teenagers working is that they can learn more than they do in schools. Great thing, they can learn a lot of things we can't learn at school. Now, here is our example. They learn knowledge that they can't get in books and this prepares them for their future career. Well, we've already said they can learn things they can't get in school, so that's kind of repeating itself without being specific. So I think you should be able to come up with a better example for this one. Okay, so pause, write your example, and then come back to see my example. Okay, I pick a job, working in a restaurant, a waiter, you know. A student that works part-time in a restaurant will learn communication skills when they talk with customers about the order or how to react to difficult people in the restaurant. Now, I would probably change my explain a little bit to say how by learning to, by dealing with difficult students at a young age, they will be much better in a company when they deal with difficult customers in their job, in their future career. You know? But for the time being, I'm not gonna change the explain because we are focusing on examples. It's not hard. Choose a specific job and a specific skill. Yeah, that's an example. This is not a job. It doesn't give us an example of a job or a skill. Okay, let's look at the BP2 for this one. So the same question still. The other benefit of part-time work is that teenagers can help support themselves and their family financially. So essentially we're saying, you know, rich families, they don't need to do this. They can do it for the first paragraph reason for the experience, but for some families, they need it. This can really help the family. Um, so I might say many poor, or I could say many poor families need the extra money to pay bills and buy food. It's not bad. It's a, it is an example. It's just a very kind of general example. Um, how could we make that a little bit better? Oh, and yes, this is a difficult one. I had trouble with this with my students in class, but I like to choose, I think the first three were all pretty easy ones. So it's nice to have a much more challenging one. So how can we put that in? Okay, what I have here is when a family from a poor area moves to the big city, their teenagers' children often work in a store or stores and restaurants to help pay the higher rent and costs. Okay, so I'm saying specifically who we're talking about. You know, in China especially, a lot of families will move from the countryside into the cities where they will try to work and they'll earn more money than the countryside but also their expenses are much higher. So they might need their children to work. Just a part-time job. After school, you'll see it. Many times I've been into a shop and seen the kids working there in the afternoon or on the weekend or during the holidays. All righty, so that's what I mean by more specific and better examples. If you have any questions about that, please ask me. Uh, when you send us your examples and questions, well, um, I will try my best to answer some of them. I'm hoping to get so many questions I can't answer all of them. So please, as usual, send your questions to us on Weixin or WeChat or by telephone. 
Um, again, by telephone, you can phone and speak to one of the lovely staff, including my wife, that work at Gate Education in the lovely city of Shandong, Weihai. Well, no, we don't say that. We say Weihai in Shandong. Thank you very much. And I look forward to your questions for me to answer in our last class on writing. Bye-bye.